Hi there, welcome to BI Consulting Pro. In this video, I'm gonna let you know all the text interview questions and their answers that I have faced during my past interviews. This video has all the text interview questions from basics to the advanced level. Not only that, during this video, you are gonna find a question that I have asked you as a challenge. Top three viewers who are gonna answer me this question they are going to get a very special PDF file that contains all the Microsoft Power BI interview question and answers. So are you ready for that challenge? Then let's get started. The very first interview question that I faced was, what is calculate text function? Well guys, if you are working with Microsoft Power BI, then you must know this one because calculate dex function is a very basic one. So let's see what is it. Calculate dex function is a filter modifier. So it's going to evaluate an expression in a modified filter context. On your screen now, you can see what is the syntax for calculate dex function. And then you can see an example where I'm trying to calculate the total sales on the last selected date. You should remember that there is also the calculate table function. It performs exactly the same functionality except it modifies the filter context applied to an expression that returns a table object. Now one more thing before we move further. Whenever your insurer is asking you a question on DAX, then you have to follow steps. That means first you have to provide the definition of that DAX function. Secondly, you have to provide the syntax if possible. And lastly, give an example. Also, if possible, you can also provide a scenario where you have used this kind of text function. So if you are going to follow this approach, you can crack your interview very easily. Now let's move forward. The second question was, what is the difference between max, max a and max x text functions? Now on your screen, you can see the difference between these three text functions. Max text function is going to return the largest value in a column or between two scalar expressions. You can see the syntax over here, which is pretty simple, where we are going to just write the max text function over a column. However, if you are writing an expression, then you have to provide the expressions under the parenthesis. While we talk about the max A, that is going to return you the largest value in a column again. And the max x function is specific for an expression. So you can use the table and the expression that you would like to evaluate over here. Moving forward, the next question was, what is the difference between distinct and values index? And this is very important. So please pay attention over here. First, you have to provide the definition of this. So now you on your screen, you can see the definition. Then you have to relate with the case scenario. In your past, whether you have used it or not, but you have to support your argument with an example. Overall, you should remember that while using the distinct function, it is not going to count the blank values over here. However, if you are going to use the values dex function, that is going to count your blank values. After that, my interviewer asked me, explain the date if versus the dates in period dex functions. This is another very important one. Dates diff function is going to return the number of interval boundaries between two dates. And over here, you can simply specify the first date, second date, and the interval. On the other hand, if we talk about the dates in period function, it's going to return a table that contains a column of dates that begins with a specified start date and continues for the specific number of type of date intervals. Next question was, Explain count, count a, and count x. As I mentioned previously, that whenever you see the x at the end of your dex function, that means that's gonna use an expression. So these are the definition for these three different dex functions. Count is simply gonna count the number of rows in the specified column that contains non-blank values. Over here, you must be thinking that count and count a definitions are same, but these are not the same because count a dex function also considers boolean data types which count doesn't and when it comes to the count x the count x function counts non-blank results when calculating the results of an expression over a table next question was explain sum versus sum x dex functions 
I'm sure you know what is sum text function. So sum is gonna add all the numbers in a column while sum x is for a particular expression. So sum x is going to return the sum of an expression evaluated for each row in a table. Explain summarized text function. This is very important one. I hope you have worked on SQL and in SQL we used to use group by to group the data. This is a similar one. So this is also going to help you to group your data. Over here, the definition would be it's going to return a summary table for the requested totals over a set of groups. And you can see the syntax on your screen. I have also provided an example where you can see that I'm calculating the summary of reseller sales table. Next, your intro can ask you what are text text functions? Could you please name some of them? I have encountered this question in many of my interviews. So please be aware and read all the text text functions. Text text functions are the functions where you can return a part of a string, search for a string within a string or concatenate string values. Additional functions are for controlling the formats for dates, times and numbers. On your screen, you can see that we have different functions. For example, combine values, concatenate, concatenate x, exact, find, fixed, format, left, length, lower, etc. So these are all the text text functions which you can use in your day to day life to perform advanced level of analytics. Do you use Tableau Editor or Text Studio or ALM Toolkit? If yes, explain. So this is a very important question when you are going to appear for your Power BI interview and your interviewer would definitely ask you whether you have an experience on the external tools and not. You must know the use of Tableau Editor as well as Dex Studio. Not only that, if you are deploying or publishing your reports to the Power BI service, you should also know about the ALM toolkit. Do you do data modeling and write Dex code? If yes, explain best practices. If you are going to appear for an advanced level of Microsoft Power BI interview or even more than three years of experience of a Power BI developer, then this question can be asked. This is of an advanced level Power BI expert question. Over here, you have to explain the best practices while you are doing your data modeling in Power BI as well as while you are creating the measures using Dex code. So these are some of the best practices that you should follow while working on Microsoft Power BI and writing your DEX codes. Please do remember that the DEX best practices over here are three, improving DEX syntax, optimizing DEX functions, common mistakes to avoid. Under that, there are certain more, which we are gonna discuss later in this video. Explain the difference between switch and if DEX functions and their performance. This is very important question. Over here, you should know that why do we use switch and if and which one is better for which case. Although their performance are similar, but that really varies case to case. There are some cases where switch performs better while there are others where if performs better. There are many articles over the internet. You can simply Google them where you can check the different tests where the author has tested their performance for, for different cases. Next question was, does it matter where we are placing introducing variables in a measure? Explain variable granularity. So this is a challenge for you guys. Please do share your answer with me. You can share in the comment section as well as you can write us on connect at biconsultingpro.com. Next question was, what is a calculate table dex function? Why do we need to use it? Does a table with calculate table dex function has relationship with other tables in the data model? In order to answer this question again, you have to start with the definition of this text function, which is going to evaluate a table expression in the context of a changed filter. As we mentioned previously, calculate dex function and calculate table dex functions are similar, except in this case, it changes the filter context applied to an expression that returns a scalar value. Over here, you can see the syntax of this one and it's going to return you a table. Please always pay attention when a DEX function is going to return you a table or it's going to return you a scalar value. You can apply only this when you are going to have a relationship with another table into your data model. Let's move forward. 
Next question was what is the difference in filter and key filter stack functions? This is another very important and critical one. If you are already working on advanced level of data analytics calculations or you are performing the DAX coding for your data analysis that you know the difference between two. Filter is going to return a table that represents a subset of another table or an expression. Generally, we use the filter in the context of calculate x function. So as I mentioned, calculate is going to modify the filter context. So we use it all there. In second case, if we talk about the key filters, this one we are going to use to key filters on certain column or a table. So it's going to modify how filters are applied while evaluating a calculate or calculate table x function. Explain lookup value and selected value x function. So now the challenge comes, what is lookup value? I'm sure you must have heard about the lookup value while working using SQL or maybe you are working on Excel. Over here in Microsoft Power BI while working with the DEX calculations, lookup value is going to return the value of the row that meets all criteria specified by one or more search conditions. Over here you can see the syntax while selected value is basically going to return the value when the context for a column has been filtered down to one distinct value only. Otherwise it returns alternate result. So we can also provide the alternate result. Selected value generally we use while working with the filters and for example you selected certain value and on the basis of that you want to return some dynamic values. There you can use it. I have already created enough videos for these two DAX functions and also you can check out how we can use dynamic measures in Microsoft Power BI. There are enough videos on our YouTube channel. If you still have any question or concern, please don't forget to let us know in the comment section. How do you handle zero index function? Explain divide function. In order to answer this question, first of all, you should know what are the different divide functions that you can use while writing your DAX code. We know that whenever we work with the zero and you are dividing something by zero, then answer is infinite. That means that cannot be determined. So in order to avoid such conditions, you have to use a divide x function. Basically, whenever you are going to have a value at the denominator as zero, then it's automatically going to return you the zero. It won't return you any error. So over here, there are the two use cases. If you are encountering anywhere zero at the denominator, then you can either write if condition that you can see in the first syntax over there. Otherwise, you can simply use the divide. I'll always suggest use the divide dex function rather than writing any if condition over there. How would you improve a measure performance? This is another advanced level question that your interviewer is going to ask you if, if you're going to appear for an experienced Power BI interview. So in order to improve the performance of your measures or DAX code, you must know the best practices. You should always follow the best practices while working with Microsoft Power BI or DAX or any other tools or technology. If you are following the best practices, then definitely your performance is going to improve. So here are some of the best practices that you can follow. As I mentioned previously that I'm going to let you know all the best practices for improving DAX syntax, optimizing DAX functions and common mistakes to avoid. So please follow these whenever you are going to work and if you are going to explain these to your interviewer, you are going to come out with flying colors. Let's move forward. I'm sure this question you have encountered many times during your interviews. No matter what kind of reporting or BI interview you are going to attend, whether it's Power BI or MSBI or maybe Jabli or something else, you must have faced this question. One report was working fine till yesterday but today it's running very slow what could be the reason and how would you improve it over here you have to see basically end-to-end -end process and what are the different part where you can improve the performance of your report generally it happens in three places so let me explain you how it does work with the power bi the very first it can be due to many visuals that you are using too many visuals on your report it can be due to inefficient data model you are using a lot of columns that you really don't need or you are using auto time intelligence functionality in Microsoft Power BI or maybe you are writing a bad DAX code. Bad DAX code simply means that you are not following the best practices and you are not even evaluating the performance of your DAX code. 
Generally, we use Microsoft Power BI's performance analyzer to get to know which visual, which text query, or what are the other factors that are taking a lot of time. On your screen, at the bottom right hand side corner, you can see this snapshot where you can see there's a highlighted other one. So others are basically regarding the visual perspective. So in this case, you should try to combine or consolidate all the visuals. You should not use a lot of visuals on your one page report because everything whatever you are going to put on your report that is going to cost your performance. So how you can improve that kind of thing? So the very basic step is you need to run the performance analyzer to check the different metrics. Then you can also optimize your DAX code and check the performance using DAX Studio or performance analyzer. Then you can optimize your data model where you can remove all the unnecessary data from there like the columns that are not being used or maybe there is a auto time intelligence functionality that you are using in Microsoft Power BI which is going to create a lot of tables at the back end that is going to slow down your Microsoft Power BI report or dashboard. Then also please try to consolidate visuals to reduce other time shown in the performance analyzer and at last try to use default visualization as much as possible or use the certified only one if it's not possible. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. Please connect with us for training and consultation. If you have any question and concern, don't forget to let us know. Also, we always welcome your all the feedbacks. If you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest Power BI videos and updates. See you in the next video.